Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be chapter four of our slavery series. Now I know in chapter three I said chapter four would be the escape to freedom. However, I decided I need to give you all a little bit more details on what the slaves were escaping from before we get into their actual escape. Now, the next part will probably be more about the punishments and all of that stuff, but I promise you this part will not disappoint. So today we're going to be diving very deep into slavery. So deep, we're going to discuss breeding farms. And with that being said, let's chat. Now, as I said earlier, let's dive a little deep and let's chat about the conditions slaves fought to escape from before we discuss their actual escape. Now, I touched a little bit on it in my last video about the plantations, but I don't feel like we went deep enough into the subject. So let's dive deep and discuss the breeding forms or the sex forms. Of course, those of you who watch my videos, you all know that we must give a backstory and understand what breeding forms were before we actually discuss them. Now, many people, they really don't know that goods weren't the only thing produced during slavery. I mean, sure, tobacco, rice, sugar, and cotton, there were some pretty hot commodities during slavery. But what many don't know is that one of the hottest commodities produced during slavery was actual people or more slaves. Now, some, they were produced the natural way, as I like to call it. I mean, you know, man meets woman, they have sexual intercourse, and they produce a child. However, many other slaves, they were produced from a not-so-natural way. They were produced by force, whether the parents wanted to or not. Now, sexual abuse of slaves, it was very common especially in the South, but nothing compared to the sexual abuse and mutilation that the slaves experienced on the breeding farms. Now, on breeding farms, slave owners, they forced sexual relationships between male and female slaves to produce as many slave children as possible. And many slave owners, they even forced themselves on the female slaves to produce children as well. And this entire practice is known as forced reproduction. Now, one other common practice used to test a young slave girl's fertility was for her master to impregnate her as early as the age of 13. And the entire forced reproduction process was coined by the phrase of natural increase. But in my opinion, there was nothing natural about it. Now, many people think the breeding farms came about once the import of slaves from Africa to the West Indies was banned in 1808. But no, they were around long before that. I mean, the death rate of slaves, it was very high, and this was due to a number of factors. I mean, some slaves, they lost their lives due to disease, some due to their horrible and inhumane working and living conditions, and many others lost their lives due to plain old homicide. And once a slave passed away, the slave owner took a loss of his investment. I mean, after all, slavery was a business, a very lucrative one at that. I mean, in fact, some states, with Virginia being one of the main ones, they produce slaves as their main domestic crop. Crazy, ain't it? So when a slave lost their life, their owners also lost money. 
And more money then had to be spent after that loss, which meant very poor returns on their investments. I mean, with so many slaves losing their lives, the slave owners, they tried to be smart. They began thinking, why go and buy more slaves when we can use the ones that we have to produce our own? So the slave breeding farms, they were around well before the 1808 ban. I mean, they just became more common after the ban or more public. In fact, the ban, it was kind of put in place to somewhat protect the breeding farms and the idea of natural increase. I mean, the external slave trading, you know, from Africa and all the other places, it was banned because it reduced the prices for the slaves and it cut into the profits of the internal America and all of the countries that were starting to build or the colonies within the United States. It affected those prices for those slaves of those internal slave trading. Now, the South, which included those breeding farms, it produced and sold enough slaves internally so external imports were no longer needed nor wanted. I mean, of course, you know, some slaves, they were still snuck in, but most were produced in the South. I mean, they actually relied on self-sustaining the slave population so much so that in 1819, in addition to the 1808 ban, another act was passed which allowed U.S. ships to patrol its own coast and the coast of Africa to try and stop the slave ships at the source. Now, internal slave breeding and breeding farms, they became a very hot commodity. And two of the largest breeding farms were located along the Maryland Eastern Shore and in Richmond, Virginia. And by 1860, it estimated that the total value of American slaves was around $4 billion dollars. I mean, this was much more than all of the gold and silver circulating nationally at that time, which valued around four hundred and thirty five million. I mean, slaves, they even valued more than all of the South's farmland, which valued around one point nine two billion dollars. So slaves, they were pretty much more valuable than anything in the world at that time. They were so valuable even President Thomas Jefferson got a piece of the pie. I mean, Thomas Jefferson, he expressed his concerns about the African slaves, human rights being violated and all that stuff. While at the same time, owning hundreds of slaves. Jefferson, he was a farmer, which some don't know. And he benefited from the increased demand for domestic or those homegrown slaves. In fact, Jefferson bragged to George Washington, name sound familiar, that the birth of black children to be slaves was increasing Virginia's capital stock by 4% annually. And another interesting fact that many may not know is that Thomas Jefferson, he had children with his slave, Sally Hemings. She was his favorite. And he sexually assaulted her for years. And Sally, she bore Jefferson's children. Children who history tries to deny. But the DNA evidence, it could not be disputed when it comes to his lineage. According to the reports. And now that we have our backstory, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's chat about the horrible things that took place on the breeding farms and the horrible things that happened to slaves all together. Pretty much the things that many try to deny. The slave women. Their fertility was tested at an early age, and they were bred once they reached the age of 13 by their masters, their master's friends, 
or a male breeder slave. And a slave woman, she was expected to have four to five children. And to encourage them to have many children, their masters promised many of the women their freedom once they had at least 15 children. And of course, most of the times it was a lie. But this was the actual hope that they gave them. And some of the slave women that were perceived to be pretty or fair looking, they were moved into the master's house and they were given a few special privileges. Privileges that came with sexual abuse from the master and sometimes the master's wife and the master's friends. Physical abuse from the master, his wife and the master's friends and the beheading of many of their children if they were born mixed. Now, some of the mixed children, they were spared, and they were made house slaves. And the female mixed children that were spared and made house slaves, they were mainly fancies, which is pretty much another nice term or fancy name for a prostitute. Now, black slave women... They were the first to receive free health care in America. I mean, to ensure they, you know, bore healthy children, of course. I mean, they, the slave owners, they went through great measures to protect their investment when it came to bearing more children for slavery. Now, the males on the breeding farms, they had it just as bad as the females. I mean, by the age of 15... The slave males had to have their bodies inspected to ensure they could produce children. And if the results of the inspection presumed the slave male to be underdeveloped, he would be castrated and used on farms or sent to the market, according to the reports. Now, the male slaves who were deemed to be developed which they felt meant they were fertile or able to produce children, those males, they were forced to reproduce and they were expected to get at least 12 females pregnant each year for at least five consecutive years. Now, it is said that these practices led to a male slave named Bert producing more than 200 children. So Bert was very fertile. And when the slaves were forced to reproduce, bags or hoods were placed on their heads. And this was done to keep them from knowing who they were having forced sexual intercourse with. But of course, we know some of them may have known who the person was just by sound alone. Now, the person they were having this forced sexual intercourse with, they could have been an aunt, a niece, a cousin, a sister, or even their very own mother. I mean, their breeders, they didn't care. They only cared about a child being produced by any means necessary. Which brings me to another interesting fact that many may not know. Now, many people, they think the term motherfucker comes from slave masters raping slave mothers. But no, it didn't. The term actually came about from slave owners forcing slave boys to impregnate their own mothers. I mean, as I said earlier... The slave owners wanted children to be produced by any means necessary. And another thing many may not know is that the slaves on the breeding farms, they were forced to have sexual orgies in front of their masters and the master's friends for entertainment. I mean, the slave men and women... They were sometimes sexually assaulted by multiple people at that time. And their masters and the master's friends, they often joined in 
on the events. And well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. But tell me what you all think. I mean, what do you all think about Jefferson and the slaves being treated like crops or cattle? What do you all think about the breeding farms and the treatment of slaves upon them? Like I said, in the next part, I know a lot of you all are wondering, like, why didn't many of them refuse? We're going to get into the punishments and the things that happened to the ones that did refuse. And we're going to creep on into the great escape off of that. But please tell me your thoughts. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.